welcome our guests. Enjoy. Okay, how are you both tonight? Thank you. Good, thanks for coming out. Um, any um, agenda revisions? Um, I did some homework in terms of processes that we might use in talking to Susan Clark about possible things for the um, mediation. So I would like to um, have a chance to put that on the agenda, present it to the board, and then see what, if anything, we want to do with it. I wanted to add discussing the Wait, treasure. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I just wanted two minutes to talk about the board public communication, um, but it sounds like we're already getting long on agenda uh, revisions, so um, I'll see where we are, and if we want to table that for another meeting, I'll be open to it. Thank you. I agree with Brian, and then also I wanted to know what was happening with the treasurer not having insurance. Yeah, it's I think it's resolved. Okay, great. Resolved, that's what they're saying. Okay. Um, any uh, public comments or correspondence? Um, do we need to um, go here to talk to the 911? Yeah, on communication? Yep. Um, do, do anybody get to bring that up? So if there's only other places to be, we can do that? No. Okay, so uh, we'll take the uh, 3.3 first. Oh, I actually we moved the consent agenda. Um, anybody going to move the uh, approval of the board meetings from minutes from uh, last 21 to 19? I think there may be some. It, those were very difficult minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I suspect there's some conversation around that. Okay. So we could have a motion, a second, and then a discussion. Right. Any motions? I'll move to approve. Second. Okay. okay. Any discussion on the minutes? I have some. Does anyone else? I just a brief um, clarification of something that I said. Uh, let's see, on this on page five. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I think is this the one about uh, elected chair? Oh no, no, sorry, that was on page two. I think uh, page two. Thank you. Um, it says Miss Teachout feels that Mr. McVeigh is in the best position to deal with Miss Toth and Mr. Kimball with a sense of curiosity. I think. <laughs> That um, what I meant to say was that um, is in the best position to deal with um, Ms. Toth and Mr. Kimball, and uh, that he has a sense of openness and curiosity that I think are just are very valuable in um, times of uh, conflict. Yeah, my, my edit, and I was going to also state that I can see how it would be difficult to capture it. My cons It's on page two. My only concern is that somebody reading it who wasn't there for the whole discussion, it's um, second, if we want to call it a paragraph, Miss May feels it's essential to run an efficient and clear meeting. She agrees that the board needs to reach out to the staff as a board. She is concerned with following open meeting laws. May look like I have concern about that about me following it or that we in general don't my concern was specific to the discussion around um, Chris McVeigh as chair as chair and the fact that in emails the need for reminders about open meeting law so my preference would be either remove it if there's no way to capture the whole thing or put it in and at least make sure that it was in reference to um, the support for that position does that make sense? Yeah, I can do. I can take it out, or I can revise it. I think the support for the position more captures what the discussion was, so I'm fine keeping it in so that people reading it know that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, that would be fine to keep it in. That would be my preference, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? No. Okay. Um, we're for a vote. Okay, all in favor of approving the four minutes as amended. Aye. Aye. Um, so, so, we, well, Brian, you said Brian started the question, so I just wanted to hear that question. Yeah, Brian, you, you said agree. you brought gave something to Chris, and we were getting the agenda put together. Yeah, I, it was, I, I, I it just so happened to read in the Times Argus. Uh, that day, this, it was, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, um, an article about 
um, our lack of compliance amongst many other schools in uh, in regards to comprehensive 911 um, services, yeah. I'd best describe it. And so I guess I was curious to know, it sounds like this has been an issue uh, the sur in the survey that this report came out of is from last June, but I just, I guess I'm interested in knowing why we weren't aware of it, or maybe we were, and I just don't remember it. Uh, so I did bring you this issue. Um, I'll start that every year since probably the past four or five years, we've had to certify to the state in our annual compliance staff. We, me, so the superintendent has to do it. Superintendent must do it. Our compliance with uh, E911 requirements. So let me explain what the requirement is. The requirement is if you pick up that phone and dial 911, that it not only shows 930 Dallas and Hill Road, but it shows room 112. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. Our phone systems in every school, including Rummy, do that. And wherever the phone's located, it shows a room number will come into the 911 operator that says this phone call is coming from room 112, the room we're in right now. In 9:30, Johnson Hill Road. That's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. All our all our phone systems. Every year we have to annually certify that. Uh, we're in the midst of doing that again for this year, but we've been compliant for two years, according to Kim. So is this wrong? Well, I don't know if it said something about U32. It, it says planning compliance you. within one year: Berlin, Callis, Doty, East Montpelier, Romney. I would say that's wrong. I didn't even read that article. Okay. Uh, but I can tell you that the documents that I was shown by Candy Chevalier today was like, that's who we're making it. Is the document basically a test? Um, it's what a, was the document you're referring to? It's a document that she has to fill out that goes to the, um, that goes to the state and data collection. So I'd have to go back. I don't know where they pulled that data from for that article. I'd have to trace it all the way back. Do you, do you, just as a curiosity, do, do, do you know how these systems tested so that it's a programming of our internal phone system mm -hmm. and it programmed that that extension of that phone is kept it here. If someone moves that phone, mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly what to do when I order Chris Blackburn to run across the hall and switch phones. If that would be a problem, I don't think it would. I think it's actually like a physical line the way it comes through the switch. So you'd have to change the actual uh, jumping jumper uh, Ethernet cables in the switch function. <laughs> so does it, what it does is say this hub that this port that comes out of the switch out of the switch is assigned this room number. So as long as all those stay right, it should be okay. So I think it would be beneficial to um, just give it in particular. Who wrote the article? Uh, Gordon Dritchelow. Not familiar with Gordon, um, but yeah, given the sort of the climate of of the now, of a correction issuing a correction, um, I think might be helpful. I don't know if it's, it doesn't sound like people have at least contacted you about it, uh, but I would imagine that some people would be concerned. Okay. Ask about it. So we we want to write to the board. Oh no! I just I thought it would be productive to have the superintendent's office just kind of. I'm not. I'm just making a recommendation. That's all. Any more on topic? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So next up on the agenda is three point one in response to the AOE regarding after six questions. So I make a motion that we approve the response to the AOE. Good, second. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Yes. 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 Um, respond to the question raised. Okay. Uh, any more discussion on this? Okay, all in favor of um, approving the response that has been proposed to the AOE? 
Hi. 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 Yesterday, I believe it was. I think it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, it was. This happened on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So it was yesterday, saying that uh, all, all timelines should be met. Um, that the staff at Peace Conference, the staff at AOE, will keep the Act 46 process moving forward to meet the deadline. Okay. Thanks. Um, next up, we have the uh, resolution on uh, gun safety and uh, school safety and gun use. Um, and I think we're talking about whether to uh, propose another re resolution regarding um, uh, and, and recognizing the use of uh, gun culture in Vermont uh, for hunting, farming, and recreational purposes, and um, proposing a resolution recognizing that and acknowledging that um, use of guns is not a way to balance things. Uh, but recognizing that it is part of the modern culture and there are many responsible um, um, gun users and owners and so that, do you want to speak to that one? Yeah, like, I don't necessarily know that we need another resolution. This was my issue. Um, I think that, let me sort of try and lay out a little bit more fully what I'm, I'm worried about, um, which is that I think that there are, I mean, there clearly are sort of class divisions in our community and that those can and often do run along the lines of um, it, it, the gun culture tends to be more associated with the blue collar um, part of our community. And that uh, school administrators and school boards and teachers tend to be perhaps less associated with that. And so my concern is that as a board, we be very careful about communicating um, you know, absolutely we passed this resolution, I'm fully behind that, but we also are careful to communicate that this is not about um, guns, this is about guns in schools. And so I would be perfectly fine just with a simple line along those lines, just to, to be very clear about what um, what the resolution is about. I, I, um, I just, I know, partly because it's an issue in our house, that, um, you know, it's a sensitive issue, and that people feel sometimes like um, administrators and, and teachers and school boards don't sort of know or understand their um, their culture. And so, I want to um, just be very careful about how we're received. Do you, you have a language you want to propose? Um, well, uh, I mean, I'll, what about something very simple about you know, the Romney board wants to sort of just acknowledge or resolve or whatever that the resolution that is passed is about schools, guns in schools. It's not about guns per se, but about guns in schools. Um, and I like the line about recognizing there's a tradition of responsible gun ownership. I think that that um, is uh, culturally specific, and I think it also is about responsible gun ownership. Um, but if people object to that, I totally get that. I thought a lot about what Carolyn and Brian said and about what Woden said. We actually carpooled home, and so Woden was able to tell me about her being at, like, the gun division in her house. And so I specifically asked some of my clients about these kinds of things. Uh, and I do have a lot of clients who are very pro-traditional, the traditions of Vermont of responsible gun ownership. And um, I, I actually agree with Woden that I think it is a something that needs to be mentioned. I rather disagree with the statement of traditional gun ownership, but I really like the idea of adding um, in the paragraph, we, the board of Romney Memorial School, result that our elected official, the member of the House and Senate, pass effective gun violence prevention. And that you sign such leg legislation into effect. Um, I wanted to add maybe a sentence that said, um, this comes specifically from a place of protecting of keeping guns out of schools and protecting schools. So like trying to just really clarify that we, the school board, are saying this about schools and that's it. And not really making any comment. I thought it might be better to not make any commentary on anything else besides all this is is schools. But based on what I heard, it seemed like it might be nice to be very specific about that. 
So just to clarify, we already adopted and approved a resolution. You want to amend it and readopt and have it as the statement included we in that original res resolution or add that line separate? Right. So I guess we could either add just an amendment to it saying that this resolution was adopted with school, the use of guns in schools in mind and relates specifically and only to schools. Um, or maybe somebody can think of a better way to say that. Yes, I guess I would think that we want to have a separate document because this resolution has already been sent to the State House. Okay. Uh, and I don't think there would be any need to amend it once it's been transferred to public officials that we want to rely upon. Okay. Uh, that resolution, but a second resolution or or a sense of the board or some vehicle like that, I think would be a better way to go about it. Just again, because this is our sent to the state house mm -hmm. and our representatives. Um, so I've, I've been reflecting on this as, as well um, quite a bit since our last meeting. And um, I hear really what you're saying, uh, Woden. Um, you know, I. I've hunted, I'm not a hunter. Uh, I've shot guns, different guns, but I don't own a gun. Uh, so I actually I really respect uh, the serious responsibility that uh, the gun owners take uh, in, in possessing firearms. Um, I mean, I, again, I feel like this is just not an issue in the purview of the school board to even be dealing with. Um, and I think uh, also, um, I think to back to about uh, two years ago when the Black Lives Matter movement emerged and um, or really picked up steam, and there was that competing narrative to well, all lives matter, right? Uh, you know, we've had here at, at Romney over this last year this idea that there are you know negative experiences and positive experiences. Uh, you know, and then we have this the issue with the guns. Uh, and school violence and seeing the kids in our local communities and across this country uh, have tremendous courage. Um, you know, I think that there are times when um, sort of a certain, certain voice, a certain issue, a certain group deserves to have their moment. Um, I think that, you know, Majority of gun owners uh, in this country are white men. And I think us white dudes have had plenty of our moments, uh, and I just I don't see this as being one of them. So I would just like to allow this to stand on its own, sort of in solidarity to what the kids are doing, uh, not just here locally but across this country. No, I think the um, just from a broader political sense, um, is um, kind of isolating groups. Because um, I think we isolate groups and kind of take resolution of pushes, uh, or would, even if it's implicit, taken your way, but is uh, taken as disparaging a viewpoint like gun ownership, uh, you end up having uh, things like the alt right. Which maybe you, you may say that's an interesting example, but I think it's a, an example of groups who feel like they're not heard or ignored or um, just not their voice isn't counted, uh, and but they their voice is counted in a smaller uh, way, which can be a negative way. Um, so if, I think it's uh, just an acknowledgement that uh, there is a um, you know a, that most people do simply use firearms. Uh, they get licensed, they go to training, uh, and they're very responsible with them. Uh, it just, it's, it takes away any, I, I think it takes away any side taking. Even though I recognize that the resolution really just deals with guns in school, um, and there's a clear policy, no firearms on the, on the school property. Um, it really is in a broader political and social context, I think. Um, so I, I would, um, I would favor a just a statement that it is um, you know, this resolution was meant to um, express our support for safety in school in regard to gun violence. Um, 
and there's no way um, if there's anything negative about responsible gun ownership. Something along those lines. Um, or some other language. Um, but I think it's uh, I mean it's just recognition of the fact that we do have a lot of neighbors who are hunters and, and possess firearms. And not not just for hunting purposes, just for their own safety or their sense of safety. So um, so it it sounds like, well, and thank you, Brian, I think that you raised a really good point that I hadn't thought of. Um, but I all, I, so I think hearing what Woden had suggested and then the piece that Allison supports that she would take, uh, the, the piece that Allison supports removing the piece about traditional gun ownership sounded like something you were interested in. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? And so that would leave, Romney Board acknowledges it's not about gun ownership, it's about guns in school. I think that would weaken the resolve that we voted on last week that already states it's about gun violence in school. Um, and, um, you know, I, I didn't want the issue coming up because I felt like it put me in a position that was beyond my school board role, but um, I think that school violence, and if we look at um, the a lot of the shootings that have occurred in schools, they were legal gun owners until they misused them. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I misspoke. Until they misused them. Um, you know, the murders in Vermont of four people, it was a hunting rifle. Um, and my understanding is it was legally owned until it was used by someone to commit murder. And so that, has, that is not what this resolution has to do with, but if we only dealt with the guns that came into school, we would not be dealing with the issue of school shootings. And that was what was put before us. Um, was to make a statement around that. And so my preference is to let it lie as is um, and, and to go beyond that is, um, I, I think it's trying to keep everybody, you know, ultra happy. And I would say, like, I think it's great that you reached out and asked, you know, your customers. That's a great way to gather data. But at the same time, this was on the agenda. There was an opportunity to email, to come to the meeting. People didn't. If I think, why why are we addressing it? Brought it to us saying, I'm offended by what you put to the legislature. So I guess I have multiple feelings on it. I would rather that we not vote on it. And if we vote, I won't be able to support it. Um, let me just say that I um, appreciate your thoughts very much. I think uh, for me, this is not necessarily worth board tensions. Um, I do really appreciate the point that you made the, uh, in our previous meeting, Brian, about sort of when something is spoken, it, it can be done in a certain way, and then you, it can also be received in a very different way. And that's the distance between our resolution and the way it's going to be received is the part that really troubles me, received specifically in our community. So that's my concern. That said, um, you know, I, I think it would be good to do something very simple. Um, I don't want to create more board tensions, um, so I'm okay letting it go. Um, you know, it depends a little bit on what your thoughts are after having had some information. So I think the discussion captured in the minutes, uh, if people read the minutes, will actually establish uh, at least the sense of the board um, in terms of maybe not being a topic that um, should be addressed. Um, but, the, you know, the not that it wasn't a, a, an important one for our community members. Uh, and, you know, I think that it, you know, the community will know that it wasn't like, you know, uh, we recognize that this isn't a call to this with bad resolution um, from the conversation that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we'll let it rest. Okay, okay. Um, I don't feel this is a matter of tension, just so you know. I don't know, I just want you to know, I, I feel it's healthy discussion, so. Okay. I'm worried about the three too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the uh, next up is for um, 3.4, preliminary discussion of board goals for 2018-2019. 
So um, I, I think I was the one, this is my agenda item, right? I, um, I think it would be really helpful for us to um, put up, maybe even on a blackboard, you know, on the, on the board, just some of the things that we're um, interested in looking at, and then Chris and Amy or you know, whomever can take a look and, and figure out how we might go about it. It sounds like Bill has support for that approach, um, just given what he said at our last meeting. I have some items. I don't know about other people. Any, any. So should I say what my items are? Yeah. Um, okay, so these are all from last year. Um, these are systems I identified for possible review based on our experience last year. Um, one is principal evaluation. How do we capture information that we should have known about? Um, one is, uh, let's see, hazing harassment and bullying being clear that our systems are good in terms of how these decisions are made, communicated, and reviewed. Now, these aren't necessarily all board items, but these were systems that, um, that I, I identified a breakdown in. Um, EST decision making, how these decisions are made and communicated, that sounds like it's probably not a board issue. Um, talking about enrichment opportunities on what basis they're offered, ensuring that all eligible children are invited. Um, Can you repeat that one? Sorry. Sure. Uh, enrichment opportunities, getting clear on what basis those are offered and how we can ensure that all eligible children are invited. Um, removal of the principal, um, this looks like the principal preservation policies speaks to that. I, I may have some other kind of items under that. Um, the institution of a no-talk policy among staff around live issues. Um, Community communication with the community during and after moments of crisis. Can you say the one for that, please? Yep. Um, the institution of a no talk policy among staff. What, what does that mean in your mind? Um, well, that's last year when things were going down um, with Adam's departure. Uh, the staff were informed that they previous should not principal. I'm oh, sorry. The previous principal's departure. Um, the staff were told that they could not speak about that. Um, right. Okay. Thank you. We heard rumors that they were told well, that they couldn't speak about that. Um, so, and, and you know, and maybe they were rumors, and so this seems a moment to sort of explore that. Um, so these are these are all systems, and I'm not saying they're all equal priority. They are items that I identified as systems that we might want to look at. Um, board staff relations. How do we ensure good communication between staff and board? Um, that's really the bulk of it. And then you have two others of mine um, kind of on as future agenda items. I think it's really important that we figure out how to heal board tensions or move together productively. Um, and I guess board staff communication is also uh, I just refer to that. So that's quite a list. Mm -hmm. um, any folks have others? Are yeah, we going just, around? Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I have, uh, so mine kind of dovetail with what was uh, talked about earlier at the full board meeting, um, but uh, really having sort of mechanisms or structures in, in place for how we operate and monitor as a board. I'm really thinking about, you know, what are our, what are our core responsibilities as a board around um, sort of the educational uh, opportunities and outcomes of students around our fiduciary responsibilities um, and then around school climate and um, you know how can we um, how can we structure those in a way to have um, you know, whether it's uh, reporting mechanisms in place that will um, that will come about on a regular basis, uh, whether it's like quarterly or annually, that will allow us to um, to get a sort of a thirty thousand to seventeen thousand foot view of what's going on, but hopefully will allow us to kind of do our job of helping to sort of support the principal and the superintendent uh, and support the students uh, in the school uh, when it comes to making decisions on budget um, or other necessary 
But I just feel like if we had, if we were more intentional about the way we operated um, and really were more focused on what it is that we are looking at, I think we'd be more effective as a board and in our decision-making process. Um, it would be great to have goals associated with that, uh, specific goals, but that's a different discussion. And then the other thing is, um, you know, at the, um, the full board, it was, you know, how do we work working um, across the supervisory union? How do we work across the supervisory union? But I would go more specifically to our board, and um, I'd like to talk about how we engage Doty mm -hmm. in particular. So we need how we engage what? Doty, the Doty board. I think, I think we need to, as a type of conversation, we need to start happen, having sooner rather than later, and that just seems like a natural starting place. That's it. Um, I wanted to add to Woden's piece about the EST um, because it was a topic that we discussed in June um, and really recognizing that it was just an area that the um, interim principal had identified as something that would need a lot of um, work and some resources. And I felt that it was included in the budget proposal that then was approved. Um, but an update on how things are going with ESC and if there's um, more that the board could do to support that process. And um, so that was one that I just, it was already on there, but I just wanted to add to. And um, in terms of board tension, I, my thought was that I, anyway, I could have put it as an additional agenda item and I didn't, but I thought that we were going to talk about board norms. Um, and, and I wonder if doing board norms before goals would make it easier to discuss and agree on and map out goals. Um, but I, it, it's more of a comment, I guess, on you know, Woden um, had commented that a goal would be to, um, I don't know if these are the words she used, but ease the board tensions. And there is in the norms for the executive board, um, there's one that's, that states board tension and resolving tension at meetings. And w one of the ways that it describes that it does that is to have um, somebody say what the consensus of a conversation is so that the, the, um, spirit of the conversation doesn't lie with the last thing that was said. So something like that could be really helpful and it could it could help everybody feel like um, if I state something and then um, Allison states something and then Woden states something, just because mine was three comments doesn't mean that it, do it didn't exist and wasn't part of the conversation. So having somebody who, you know, has a role of um, summarizing could be really helpful. So I think in terms of board norms, there could be norms that are in place that could help with um, tension in terms of relational tensions. Mm -hmm. I think tension in terms of a 3-2 vote, I, I think um, personally I wouldn't want that as a goal because sometimes that can really show um, diversity on a board it shows um, voting with integrity if it's if it's constantly the, the same three two vote that should you know that could show something different or it, it might not um, so I wouldn't want a goal of always having five zero votes but I would want a goal that we have respectful um, dialogue and communication and I think we could use a norm um, that could help um, over time when it's being followed that would help build trust and help ease ten ease the spirit of tension. Carolyn, can I yeah. just mention something about the board and Allison about the norms? Uh, oh, yeah. So the norms that she's referring to that were on page two of our full board meeting are actually the Rumney norms uh, that we adopted three years ago. Oh. Um, and the board adopted them, the full board adopted them. We um, had them at our, we had a retreat, because I, the yeah. way the phrasing of the one under tension, I said, those are my words, but I don't remember <laughs> doing this. And that makes sense now. <laughs> um, so revisiting those or having them printed like on the back of an agenda so that we can always refer to them, something like that could, could um, go a long way, I think. And I would add um, having, target end times to meetings would help because 
it would give us a sense of how long we have to discuss an item, um, that we all kind of agree that, you know, things like um, a productive meeting should be three hours or less, because um, there's a lot of data that supports that. So having a goal of, you know, two hours or less. Three, did I say two? <laughs> well, th it, the data suggests a meeting over three hours, you get less and less oh, productive. Gosh, yes. <laughs> and so having a goal of, um, you know, we had, we had casually mentioned it last year that we would have an 8.30 end time, and if there was an executive session, we would say nine. But it was very casual, and then we did have a lot of meetings that ended before nine, which was an improvement over the past year. But if we really know that we, if, if that is something we all agree on and we all work towards, it could make it a little easier to have um, conversations and know how in depth we want to go on each one. So that's it. Yeah, so I'm actually really interested in this because uh, I don't know much about being on the board really besides what I've read, but everything I've read suggests strongly that having a really, um, a really tenacious plan in place is really helpful for boards especially if that plan coordinates well with the principal, the teachers, and the superintendent. So uh, in 2015-16, the Rumney Memorial Board created quite a, an elaborate system of goals. It was on our website right now, which is where I found it. Um, and I actually think that this is like a lovely template, but it's just way too big. Um, it felt overwhelming. Like, well, what if we just, okay, so we saved the world. Great, let's do that. Um, so I, th I think we need to just really narrow it down to a few things. But I do like the categories that they had. And I thought it might be really nice if we tried to. And actually, Adri, Adrian, um, thank you. Uh, I talked to her about this because Bill mentioned that she had some strengths in this area. And I'm hoping to talk to her about it more. But I really like the idea in my mind before I talked to her of like, OK, look at, let's look at all of our goals, our four areas, which according to this one, and I thought they were pretty nice, but were community engagement. and. Um, fiscal, long-term fiscal planning and responsibility, uh, educational and academic learning outcomes. And I'm sorry, I've gotten a little, like, I have too many papers here, I've gotten a little. And this has kind of been a work in progress in my head, too. There, there was one more. And if we kind of, each, each session, we, okay, have we addressed these goals in these four sections? Is there anything in this section? And so for Adrian, she actually breaks it out. She makes goals for the year, and they go over one goal at each meeting. Um, so there were a couple that I thought were important, and I would love to kind of outline these and see if we can get better, but bridging educational gaps, that was one I had. I called it bridging the gap, and for you it was making sure enrichment opportunities were available to a broad set of people. Um, that was a really important one for me. Um, let's see here. Uh, teacher innovation. I feel like principal and teacher innovation, like that's where our talent is, it's at our school, and what can we as a board do to really encourage programs that our teachers are interested in? Like what's gonna get them really curious and interested and get them really loving their job? Like I love this part of it, and you know what, I feel like that's a really, anything we can do to do that, that for me that would be a really important goal. Um, community involvement. I thought one way we could potentially do this is have a check-in session at the end of each, you know, one section of our meeting, like, okay, I've heard from the community uh, broad strokes about this, this, and this, and so we can start to see over time, okay, we keep hearing that we're hearing about this, and I can bring up why I think we should do this when we talk about communication, but it occurred to me if five different people are concerned about things and they talk to five of us, but we're not really allowed to, like, we never talk to each other about it because we don't really bring up single, is this making any sense what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then how would we ever know that it's a problem? But if we kind of listed, somebody's approached me about this topic, then we would know that. Um, and I completely agree with Brian that I think being very intentional and making that be an overriding goal, is this the work of the board, is it not? Does it fall into one of our four categories or whatever categories? I think that that would be helpful. So that's a not super well organized description of my feeling on this. Okay. Um, I'm going to put you back on Brian's suggestion about um, really reaching out and working with Dodie um, because I think the geographic proximity would be really beneficial to both of us and, and just establish like a liaison and maybe try and schedule when we have, we just attend each other's meetings, have a group of two attend um, Dodie and see if they're interested in attending us. And, and actually just having a, a, a brainstorm in terms of what we can help each other in terms of uh, either space 
for uh, sharing equipment uh, on a one-to-one -one basis, something like that. But exploring that and doing it like soon, you know, not next year, but, but, but this year. Uh, another thing I think we should explore um, is uh, the fiscal long-term planning. Um, this issue became pretty close to, I think, penalty zone, uh, and mm -hmm. only avoided it by shifting, you know, the uh, capital funds mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, or, you know, reducing the funding of it by half. Uh, and so I think we should have a sit down with uh, uh, just the goal with Superintendent and Amy uh, and more people and talk about what we need to revise within our budget um, and what potential impacts of that can be because that, that it probably is not sustainable for more than a couple of years, if that, and it will be in penalty zone. And I think that is probably somewhere that none of us want to be. Uh, I don't think we can avoid the, my, my calculations, I don't think we can avoid the penalty next year. So maybe looking at getting information on, on the penalty and, and what it is mm -hmm. and how it impacts us. Because um, the way things are going now, with salary increases alone, we can't avoid the penalty without major cuts. Like, so then, then explain what that major cut will be. Yeah. Um, or, or, or taking change. the penalty and making that decision and communicating it out. Something, right. But, That's right. But, but addressing sooner rather than later so we yeah. are taking making a deliberate choice of saying mm -hmm. because of what we need for our school yeah. and our students um, this is what we think we need so really more involvement in the budget process earlier on uh, than, than uh, we've normally done um, another thing that and this may seem like a minor thing but the overall student thinks that it is important because it's really community things just try and deal something with the weather issue um, because that caused a lot of um, difficulty, I think, in the community, and just trying to uh, reach out across the district and establish a better system for calling school, um, probably better equipment uh, for our buses, because one of the things I think I heard pretty clearly from Paul Seminar is that those buses should have snow tires uh, on them, not all, you know, not all season radials. Um, and just really focusing on that because We've been, I think we've been lucky in terms of the buses have been off the road enough and we've not had any injuries. And I think we've been really lucky with that. And, and it just, uh, it was a very enlightening conversation to have Paul Sermon and I talk about, you know, part of the difficulty for him is that he comes in at 5.30 and the roads may be fine, but they're not going to be fine at 8.30 because of what, especially this time of year where the temperature mm -hmm. of the road melts it. So just. Talking about really trying to establish a policy where we can have a better handle on getting better equipment for our buses uh, and a better sense as to uh, when school should be called and being more aggressive about it. Um, if we have to go a couple extra days, you know, I don't think anybody would complain. Well, maybe they'll complain about it, but you know, it's the what if um, issue that we don't want to have to deal with. Or if only, I guess we don't want to deal with that. Um, Can anybody, does anybody know what Bill means when he says the schedule needs to change for, like, to accommodate weather purposes? Are you talking about year-round, or? He's talking, yeah, he was talking about having to go away from an agrarian calendar, which is now summer's off. Right. Mm -hmm. I think he's talking more about, um, and you heard him mention about, I don't know if the Shipman County Post got it passed, but doing um, four quarters, essentially, of the school year, and then having one to two week breaks in between quarters. Okay. So something more like that is what I think he was talking about. Uh, so basically do away with summer. Uh, they long they studied it for at least five years from 19, 1991 or 1992 to 1997, like extensively turning Vermont into year-round schools. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened with it, but it suddenly was dropped. I think it was the expense because we don't have air conditioning and there were enough, there are enough days that it would be you wouldn't be getting any education to be in the building. We've had that at some of our board meetings at night. Um, so it's interesting to hear that it's come back up again. Um, yeah, it, well, I think the, with this whole the start time uh, discussion, it, I think it will blossom into, okay, how can we use the mm -hmm. school data? Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think there's a little information about that. Um, so, how do you want to go about 
Can we, can I actually, and I don't want to like so spring this on Amy if she's not keen for it, but I would like to hear any thoughts that Amy has on what, what you think our goals should be to help support you. Um, I would like a little more thoughts. Sure, on, but of course. In general, like I, I do think that the um, fiscal responsibility and having kind of um, a picture long term um, is really important in this moment. And uh, you know, I'll kind of build on that in my principal notes. Um, but given some of the projections that we have for population, it is something that we need to be um, you know, kind of looking to uh, gain efficiency in some of our redesigning and that kind of thing, um, and not just add on, right? Um, I think looking um, at the gaps, you know, and that can be um, looked at a lot of different ways. I, I really believe equity is really important and making sure we are um, closing gaps for kids as well as you know, providing really um, cool innovation stuff. You know, um, we've had some interest from teachers and we're actually um, exploring some faculty doing some project-based learning um, classes this summer um, that I've previously led all over the state and um, think that I found out a way to kind of teach a class adjunct for, um, for them who can um, kind of maybe gather some of that. Who's that then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, that could be a really cool way to um, be doing some kind of out of the box thinking that would be very hands-on for kids and better utilize our environment. We have a lot of um, opportunities around learning that I believe um, are being underutilized for learning. Um, and I would love to like just turn the teachers loose on that and actually use that as a way to um, because it's, it's really something they've expressed an interest in. So, um, and I, I think any time we can increase the collaboration across, um, you know, the school district, uh, across the community, all of that is just really positive. I also just want to add that <clears throat> the climate committee sort of has got undergone various transformations and has not been doing much lately. And I think it would be useful for us as a board to figure out if our original vision, revisit that and figure out if our original vision makes sense, if the way it morphed makes sense, you know, but, but be intentional about what's going on with that. Do you mean the meeting? Like a, like a the, well, there was a climate committee that was involved, um, composed of a couple board members, mm -hmm. um, various staff. A um, couple of people from central office, and then that kind of over the summer that ch sort of changed focus. So it was more of an internal school committee, um, and so you know we had talked about three to five year process, and um, you know continue, making sure it was a very widespread thing. And you know so we, I just want us to be thoughtful about what's going on with that, and, and make sure that the right thing is. Um, any suggestions on how we went out with this piece down? Because uh, each of us had a handful. Uh, I was thinking we could each make a, a plan and okay. then look at our plan like hopefully in a one page kind of thing. And after hearing everyone's suggestions. Yeah, it, it would, I think it would be helpful to have them on one sheet of paper mm -hmm. uh, and see where there's threads. Uh, but you know, there might be like I, as I was hearing Woden talk about some of the things she's interested in. They seem to be sort of um, mechanisms, you know, to achieve some of the things that I was I'm interested in. So like, um, you know, like just having a way to see how these might fit together already. Um, but I think just seeing them visually would be helpful. And I think this is going to take multiple meetings to. And then, um, the benefit of being coordinated that with Amy and, and Bill, just in terms of the depression, see if there, those goals are supporting uh, what we want to be doing as four students. Uh, okay, so uh, what, if we, what if we do that? What if we each, in, uh, do you want me to put them all into column form? I'd be glad to do that and send it out. And if I've misstated anything, just send me an email to uh, correct it. Okay, I'll do that a week before our next meeting, so we'll tell you that. Okay? 
Any more conversation about that? Okay. Uh, report to the board. Actually, wait, Chris, um, I did have this material about um, community discussion that oh, okay. I did a fair amount of homework on. Sure. Um, so I realized that if we are going to get this done, we need to start thinking about it right now because May gets really crazy, and so it would have to be um, probably early May or before, which is not early May. Yeah. Here. Um, so I, uh, my concern is a community forum, which you know I know we've had various discussions about. Um, I uh, talked to, wanted to at least just a, a get a bunch of information about what our options are, um, in, both in terms of formats and people, so we can then make a decision. Um, I talked to Susan Clark. Um, She's been working with the Town Meeting Solutions Committee to plan a community vision to action process for the fall, working with Amy, you mentioned that in your report, um, and soon to meet the Select Board and the Planning Commission, other local leaders. The particular impetus is the five-year town plan update, as well as the change of ownership of the Camp Mead property, which I had not known about. Um, it's also clearly an important time for running community relationship. The goal of that vision, which is not what I'm talking about, is to um, focus on what we have in common in terms of vision for Middlesex as a whole. And there's a whole months long process of community buy-in and she's looking at a date for mid to late September. So um, that was kind of background in terms of her, um, her interest. I asked her about sort of what our options were for Rumney appropriate forum. And she shared this uh, National Coalition for Dialogue and Deliberation Engagement Streams chart. And so there's two, the next two sheets are these engagement streets and they go together um, and you look at the primary purpose you've got a name for the engagement stream key features important when you know very, very, very different models you can use so one of the engagement streams is exploration one is conflict transformation one is decision making one is collaborative action um, and she said it sounded like we were looking at the conflict transformation transformation box, although she didn't want to put us in there without. But that was just sort of from what I um, what she understood. Um, she said if the board wants to move forward with this, it would be ideal to do it soon. For example, the spring to help set the stage for production productive vision to action process in the fall, which is that she's seeing in a collaborative action box. Um, so she said the first thing a facilitator is going to need to know is what our goals are for the process. If you remember, that's exactly what Susan Terry asked us. Um, for instance, are people feeling a need to get for some kind of public reckoning with consequences, or can the entire board get behind a goal of clearing the air, making sure everyone's heard, and taking action to improve relationships and promote healing so everyone can move on? Um, my sense is that we're in that second category, but I um, felt important to kind of lay that out as, a, as two paths. Um, I told her our budget, um, which I understood was to be $1,500, and asked if she knew anyone she would recommend. Um, she heard good things about Lisa Bettinger, who ran the restorative justice process in South Burlington. I um, emailed with Lisa. She's too busy, but she has some suggestions for us, and she shared her circle keeper outline, which is the last page, and that gives you a sense of the kind of questions um, and discussions that they had in small circles um, there. Um, just these are the, this part is all people. She recommended Sue McCormick and asked Sue, you know, if she might be interested. She's not available, but recommended Annie O'Shaughnessy. Um, and I also got another recommendation from Lisa Bettinger. And then Susan has also heard generally positive things about Susan Terry, but didn't have personal experience with her. Um, so I just wanted to get us to a point where we can see, you know, A, is it something we want to move forward with? B, what kind of process might it be? And then C, can we perhaps delegate that to a couple of us to, to go ahead and work on? And I know that's a lot. Can you start with A again, please? Um, is this something we might want to do? I mean, do we want to go forward with some sort of community discussion? I mean, I, I, I would, I would love to do some type of a survey to use um, just to gather data from where people are at. Do the majority of the community feel this is still a need and that um, they would support allocating money to this? Because I just don't have a sense anymore of um, where people are at. I'm not confused. I'm in favor of scheduling one, but I think you 
suggestion of survey is a good one. Um, and it, if it came back and it, we had fair, good response, uh, and it said only 10%, then I would tend to think that we don't need this or won't go forward. But if it came back and was in the 35 to 40% range, yep. and even though it's not a majority, I would tend to think that we would want to go forward with something like that. So um, I think that's a good suggestion in terms of just kind of gauging the community climate. Um, and do, do we want it the entire Middlesex community or the school community? I think it needs to be because um, some of the people last spring who would come to meetings and, and participate in the discussion, I mean, I don't know everybody. I got the sense that not everybody had children in the school, but they had um, somewhat of a sense that something had happened and they weren't really clear. So I would want to open it up. I don't know the best way to do that. Um, Do we, I'm sorry, were you no. finished? Yeah, uh, yes, I was finished. Um, just a quick question about the costs. Um, I know that's what we budgeted, but are we clear that that is what it's, that that is sufficient to, to accomplish what it is that we We had said up to that amount for like the initial um, planning stages. I don't think that we said we would never spend more than that. Because um, I guess where I'm going, I think that we should be clear um, with any communication asking for feedback from the community about what the expectations of cost mm -hmm. would be too. Um, and if that's how they want to see their resources prioritized. Yeah. I, I don't understand why it's so expensive. What are we doing? Well, to get good responses, like you serve food, you provide child care, um, we would be paying a facilitator, those, those types of things. And to say, it's, we've discussed the idea of this not being just one single mm -hmm. moment, um, because that may not be productive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I think it probably depends on how it's structured and what um, what the expectation is around uh, how we're going to do it, really what we hope to accomplish. Um, but I don't think a two-hour session is necessarily going to resolve it. Right. School facilitators. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I was talking to someone recently, $3,000. For one. For one. For that, yeah. <laughs> well, Lisa Bettinger said it's for one, um, she, two people, or Annie O'Shaughnessy and Denise Perry, they're interested in leading this effort together. They know our budget, um, but I think that they were thinking it would be a one. Uh, my sense was that it was going to be probably a one day thing. So, um, I mean, my sense is that we should just do it um, because we said we would last mm -hmm. year and that um, I think that there are a lot of sticking points. I think it may not be um, comfortable in all moments, but I think that a skill facilitator can help us, you know, do these things, right? To um, create a safe space for people with different views to talk about their personal experiences and feel hurt, often to set the groundwork for deliberation and action. Um, and I, I, it, for me, it's worth spending $1,500 if that's what it takes so that we can um, feel like a functional community and a functional board. And I think that, that that's also going to be useful for our board. Is everybody comfortable if we, um, I didn't, I didn't know we were discussing it tonight, but can we do the reports to the board and then come back to this before the end of the meeting? Is that okay? And that way it gives us just time to formulate what we're going to do next. Just
Um, not a question. Uh, I, when I was reading um, about uh, the work with Susan, it reminded me, and I had a conversation with my neighbor uh, not long ago. Uh, his name's Don Hirsch, and he's a former board member here, um, chair of the board uh, for a while. Um, and he was involved in leading an action planning process for the board back oh, geez, at least 10, 15 years ago, I think it might have been. Um, but he's also a, uh, in his professional line of work, a consultant working with nonprofit boards and leaders around strategic planning. Um, so he offered himself up as just a sounding board, not someone to do the work, but you know, given his dual hats and his experience in these hands. Oh, just to uh, be a sounding board, just, you know, to share some thoughts, um, you know, based on his experience on the board of Rumley and the plan that they did and just his work with, with leadership and his professional around strategic planning. Um, he wasn't trying to, he wasn't interested or trying to sort of sell his services or anything like that, but just if he could be a resource, he'd be happy to, to support. Um, you can we did a Okay. Yeah. Um, we can we use the, uh, uh, no, the uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I have a on the, um, yeah. Well, I met with the playground folks the other day. trying to make it, she was trying to make it work as fast as we could, and you know, there's that, and there's some work, you know, I think she should take some time, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to get there, I think we're going to need some, uh, we're going to need many hands mm -hmm. to all put together, and then we're going to probably need some help. So personally, what I would like is if we had a goal to um, get a survey out and have the results for the April meeting, which is April 12th. So if we, um, when we were doing Act 46 and we wanted to get um, the surveys out on that, I think what we did and we can probably find it in the minutes, is we went through the school um, email and front porch forum. And I almost feel like we were going to, or people could request to do it a hard copy. I think, I think that was an option if people wanted to come pick up, they could do it in the survey so, after school. So maybe we could do the same thing. 
for this survey. Um, I mean, we could try it. I, if we had a deadline of April 10th, if we got it out by Friday and had a deadline of April 10th, that gives people a week, a week 10 days. I'm not sure I agree with the idea of having a survey. So for me, if I thought that, so what's the answer? Let's say we get 100% of people and they all want to have a for the year. So let's say we get only 5% of people. So to me, that means, are we not going to do it? Like, I guess I feel like there's a very good chance that it's very important to a small number of people. And I think there's a very good chance it's actually not very important to the larger people. So the question is, are we willing, to me, the question is, are we willing to spend money to help a small number of people feel better about, you know, be able to feel better about, I don't want to diminish what's happening to everyone, but um, if that would be restorative for a small part of our community, or potentially a large part of our community, even if it's just a small part, I guess I still think it's worth it. I feel like this is an ongoing issue, and I, I think people would feel better knowing, and I think people that don't have an issue with it would feel better knowing that it happens. Oh, look, we as a community did our best to, and I don't, I think the question would be, do they think getting together as a community and discussing it is still needed in the best way to move forward? My point is, so what, what happens if, let's say, 85% of people say that, no, they don't really think that's helpful anymore, so they don't come. But does that mean that we discount the other 15%, or even if it's 10%, or even if it's 7.5%? I'm just not convinced that's the right I, th I mean, to me, we would have the data, and we could discuss... We could discuss it when we saw it and had it in our hand. I don't have a, no, you enough. know, preconceived like, oh, if it's not this much, I wouldn't support it. But I just really have no clue. Is it two people? Is it? I have no idea if there's anybody who really even still feels that this is needed. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly willing to consider. I'm not going to do blood work on a horse if I'm going to get antibiotics anyway, despite what my blood work tells me. So I'm not sure that we need to run. But if, if everyone disagrees, I'm certainly really happy to. Thank I'd, I'd love to do that. I think also we need to really be smart about dates because <clears throat> end of May gets crazy. So it would have to be in the first two weeks of May, I think. Within that, I think dictates everything um, in terms of our you know, time. It's really good. But we can't do it, you know, we don't want to let it go over the summer, right? 
Um, can't do it in June, can't do it at the end of May. So it, to me that suggests, you know, if we want to have another full meeting with the board, I'm happy to do that you know, next week, or I'm happy to work with somebody, or just carry it myself. You know, I think if you look at these questions, they, they seem to me something that we could all get behind. I'm not saying these would be the questions, but they, you know, I think it's the kind of questions that we're looking at. Why did you decide to come tonight, and what's important to you about this conversation? Um, what are you hoping for out of this conversation for yourself, for others, for our community? What do you think needs to happen next for our community to start to heal? Um, so, where are you? Yeah, reading? So this is a circle keeper outline, and this is um, this is just I thought a very helpful kind of concrete sense. I mean, I don't know what they do in the Board of Justice, right? But so this is what in um, South Burlington when they had this issue. I think it was about the rebels and the rebels. You know, people, very strong feeling. Um, they had this big-ish community meeting and a bunch of different circles um, in which people talked. And so then there were facilitators for each of the circles. Um, and in the circles, they went through these different questions. Um, but this may be something like what we want, it may not be, but it, it seemed to me to start to answer the questions that we've had before, um, you know, about, uh, you know, what, what is this actually, what's the context of this going to be? Why, can I ask, uh, why wasn't this put on the agenda? <laughs> Uh, it was originally. I don't know whether it got kicked off. I, I mean, I, I sent it to you. Do you know what I think happened? I think I think it was that in the to the And it looked like it got. I think it got okay. You know I, mean? I, I, I remember being down below and you know, seeing that stuff. I, I don't know. That's it. So I guess maybe I'd like to propose that we set a tentative week date for it. Um, for the actual event. For the actual event, okay. um, which I would like to propose maybe second week in May. Mm -hmm. This will take our two calendar. Take our two calendar, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to be around for this week. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is, are you rec are there is that what you're um, proposing you have facilitators in mind? For me, I I want to be thoughtful about this and so I don't process things that quickly. Uh, and so for me to make a snap decision on this is a little difficult. Um, but I would definitely be interested in having a conversation with facilitators about how they are envisioning this and kind of getting a, uh, their walkthrough of kind of how this all, all goes. So it just, so I have a better understanding of what we are potentially committing to. Um, I guess I feel rushed in the moment to, to commit to it. Um, so how about this? Why don't, um, would you be willing to work with us on this Um. Oh, sure. Um, you know, if this is something I want to do, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'll have to give that some thought. Well, um, why don't I propose that we actually meet again next week? Because 
deal with this and get it out um, and, and make some progress. Um, and um, we have an entire meeting dedicated to doing this. We can invite Stephen Terry back. You know, we can think about um, you can think about what kind of information you would need. I'm happy to do the legwork and go get it. Um, but I think uh, you know, if we're looking at second week in May or third week in May, we need to be doing it right away. Wait, you would have the whole board meet next week? Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, yeah, and let's, I mean, then let someone no. else to work with me on a... Could, uh, could, we, could we do something like 8 o'clock at Red Hens or half A.M. or P.M.? A.M. No, I can't. No. Um, and no, I don't support additional meetings to, um, to make this happen. And there are reasons for that that we don't need to go into in terms of board functions. I think having two people meet, deciding on next steps, those two people should be deciding who's the facilitator that matches our budget, our timeline, what will the board be expected to do after this, because we're not just going to do it and then not know what our next steps are and let the feedback lie. Um, that was recommended by Susan Terry. And, um, and bring any, any additional pieces that come out of it. And that we come prepared to talk about what uh, the focus will be, what the expectation is, and, um, and that we do that in a, at, the board, at the regular scheduled board meeting. Okay, so um, I will ask the board for trying to change the mind and say that you have to work on it. So then I would tell out um, and we can go to the board. Okay, I mean, just let me go to the board. Okay, great. Okay. And so just so we're very clear, are we, when we approach, you know, the facility that we have two recommendations plus these and Terry, um, so it's also been recommended to us, what do I say? Do I say we, we're inclining toward doing this. We're like, I mean, I just I know I need to know what my next step is before yeah. the board meeting because I don't, I'm not clear on that. Okay, so next step, we have to just get a sense that I'm going to bring you forward. I'm going to bring you forward. Um, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. I, I want to. I want, I'm interested in hearing, you know, from the experts on. On this, um, so I guess I'm interested in that part. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's enough to say that we may we probably need to go forward. Okay. And when the folks jump out in May, because um, May first week of May, okay. uh, May uh, and then still stage stuff as well. Next part would be Saturday morning, and then. Um, why over a like weeknight? What? How was the? Um, how many people came when we had a the facilitator that central office hired? His name I can't remember right now. Yeah, that that was an evening, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was like sixty people. Forty people. Is that many people? So what? I'm just curious why we're thinking of a weekend day over a weeknight. Um, but if, if more, I'm perfectly fine with the weekend. So I just want to say this about the schedule. Yeah. You're going to have soccer and baseball issues on a Saturday. Or okay. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to have better, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that you'll have better, you'll have better attendance in the weekend. And, then, and I, anyway, you're going to have people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's funny. You should, you know, what do you think? I just, knowing the kid, kind of, once you're in May, you're in the lab, you're in spring soccer schedule. We, we had twice as many people at the Act 46 that we had on the roof day than we did on the Saturday. That's right. Okay. So that's okay. a couple data points, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's aim for a weeknight. Um, and then I, guess, I think, I mean, it sounds to me, Brian, like you are the person who needs to talk to them directly. I'm happy if we hire professionals to go with what they do. So maybe you should work with me on this. At least I, not part of it. What's that? At least maybe just on that specific part of on it. On that specific part. I, I, I'd like to the, the, I'd like to have you know, them come in front of the I'd, I'd like to have the board conversation with them and have um, I guess a clear understanding as a board 
when it is it's kind of like we did with Susan because that un I feel like that unveiled some serious disconnects mm -hmm. amongst the board and so I want um, I feel like and part of my issue is that you know we're trying to do this as a community and we have our own issues um, and you know I've been talking for a long time though before we can do anything else we got to fix ourselves uh, and I, I guess I don't think that this is doing this is going to just necessarily resolve this. Uh, maybe it will make a difference, but I just so that is um, that is my concern. And also, I just think that some of the things that surfaced when Susan Terry was here um, concern me about what's get, what that uh, that evening is going to look like. Um, and you know, if we're going to be putting, we're going to be finally providing this to our community. Um, I want it to be as beneficial um, as it can. Um, but so, I guess that's that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. I also wouldn't want it to distract from the work that um, Amy's doing with Susan Clark and and that community engagement. I I just want. I think Susan Clark was, it'd be really helpful to do this and get and it over clear the air and then not have that hanging over the, the, the press for the little time. Um, is it just an interesting question to do a story hearing about saying that that's going to be a bit? My concern is uh, just if the numbers are out, really. It goes off at times, and I kind of think um, it all seems a pretty high stress time for teachers. Um, and just for all these people together, that's not the only thing that can be a success like So, in fact, earlier would be better. Um, if we could do it at the end of April, I, I would like to do it outside of that window if possible. Um, What's the window, Amy? I, the first year was 14. Okay. We may end up being shorter than that. Um, So maybe a bit more than part of the third week. Yeah, part of the third week. Yeah, right. And we're not yet yeah, in the school concerts. We don't exactly. I was just going to say that. The school concerts hasn't right. been set yet or anything. School concerts. Yeah, I can check with, um, let me check with the staff, and I'll also touch base with probably and um, with the rest schedules. We will also make it more complicated. Just want to make sure that U32, um, at least school, I am thinking of school performance. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, there'll be something going on every night. I'll be here most of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it, with, with what we see outside right now, everything's back in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm not, I, I'm, I'm thinking of I'm not. Like performance. Like a perfor something that's going to really draw pull, out the community. Yeah. The most. Uh, Sounds like before the first of May would be better, frankly. Yeah. So I would recommend that we try to say, let's set a date. Let's see if we can engage one of these people that Woden's interested in and offer that person a small retainer to reserve that date for us and nothing else so that we can plan over the course of this month and make final decisions at the next meeting. Otherwise, I don't see this happening. If we, don't, if we wait till the next meeting and decide to think about it more then, then I, I don't see how we can possibly schedule it to fit this timeline that I'm hearing. Right. The month from now. Yeah, I mean, it seems like an impossibility. I think, I mean, I'm just going to back up and say, we're going to have some people that are going to miss it. We're going to invest your time. For sure. But if we yeah. want to make it happen at all, and we want to try to make it happen at what seems like an optimum time, which sounds to me like the very end of April, before testing begins and before. The very end of April is April vacation. And there's April vacation, and then I'm. I think it's like the 23rd, 24th, somewhere there, right? I'm gone that week. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You're gone that week. Yeah. I'm gone the week. The break is a little early this year. Yeah. So there's the 23rd, right? No, it's like the 18th. No, it's the 16th through the 20th. Okay. Okay. Caroline's going to be gone then. I'm actually going to be gone the first week of May. So I think the third week of May, the testing is done. It's over with. There will be some conflicts, but there's always going to be some scheduled conflicts. Okay. okay, the third week of May. So the question is, how do we get from here to there? Um, 
the world never has to be your eyes or find what to do with this. Put their own things to the world. Then you have to be facilitated um, to the needs of what they have to offer. Is there any of you interested in talking to facilitate or to, to, to make anyone talk with them individually if they want to? Well, and Susan came to the board, so yeah. is it beneficial to go with Susan? We've done the initial, oh wait, we're not on the same page, have her come back and start where we left off. I'm, I'm totally open. Yeah, I think we need, what, what she asked us and what we need to be clear about, and I think these charts are incredibly useful, yeah. is what do we want? And so I think we're in the conscious transformation. I don't know that anybody disagrees with that. There are five appropriate little um, B and D processes. I gave you the photocopies of the pages that look like that. You know, I think we can make some of those mm -hmm. decisions. Hopefully, even tonight. Um, and Susan's the one who came to the board meeting last time. Yes, yeah, at U thirty two on February twenty first you know, or whatever. And then decide who we might want to go with. I mean, we've got some recommendations. Uh, three different names. Two of them sound like they want to work together. Um, but I think if we're going to have the kind of conversation you're talking about, Brian, we do need to meet next week and have that conversation then. Maybe by that. Super helpful. This is um, Susan Clarkson. Yeah, exactly. I just I keep getting confused by Susan. Susan Clark sent this to you. Susan Clark, um, um, Middlesex Town but moderator, Susan was working with Amy. Was the one who was here. Susan Terry, sort of grayish hair. Okay. Um, right. I like this thing that Susan Clark sent. Susan Terry. And Susan Clark is not interested in being a facilitator, she or she a, wasn't I, at the no. time we asked her. I, I don't think she should be. I, yeah, she's she's not. Just, I think she's having a non. Yeah. I think it makes total sense. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that. If Allison was thinking she did all this, great, let's use her, and then no, it was no, clear no. that. No, I don't think so. Uh, no, I think this is great stuff, though. Um, so, what are the, the different processes that they identify for conscious transformation? Uh, it's like the appropriate handy processes. What are they? Sustained dialogue? Uh, sustained dialogue, dialogue intergroup dialogue, in communities, <laughs> victim offender mediation, PCP dialogue. What's PCP? Yeah. So let's actually even just look at those ones right now. Compassionate listening is two to two hundred people, usually fewer than thirty. It varies between thirty minutes and three days, depending on how many people are involved. It's open to whoever's drawn. Often listeners are brought in to hear the stories of oppressed or oppressors. Um, Where are we looking at? Uh, so the process distinctions. You hear they list all the different processes and then kind of like that. It gives you a sense of what's appropriate, you know. No. What, what page are you looking at exactly? Mm -hmm. So this page is three. <coughs> under appropriate D and D processes. Is it, are we supposed to be looking at this? this is I think it's a. So those are those two go to me? That's that, yeah. So if you go to concept transformation, I know, right? And I'm sorry, I just I got, I got all this this morning. So, um, so, so, and then if you look on this page with a smaller grid and a smaller type, then we have two of them. The first one starts with 21st century town meeting, and the second one starts with interview dialogue. Um, they'll just list them. Compassionate listening is one option. That's two to 200 people, usually fewer than 30. Intergroup dialogue is single or multiple groups. And those are regular weekly meetings of two to three hours. I think we can probably X that out of our options. Right? We're not looking at doing regular weekly meetings. Right. Um, public conversations, project dialogue is a small group for multiple two hour sessions. Sustained dialogue is a small group for numerous two to three hour sessions. I don't think you want to do that either. So the victim offender mediation feels to me like the most appropriate, but also there is there isn't really a very clear victim and offender, but it seems like that type of approach is more what, what I mean, am I, that? am I, I feel like when, Where when are people are, of it? oh, under that same, mm -hmm. 
I mean, I saw that. I just it, it showed it. so it's under appropriate D and D processes under three. It's mm -hmm. and what makes it seem appropriate? I mean, all I see is the X in the conflict resolution box, small groups, multiple stores. Like, what makes it seem appropriate? I'm saying I feel that people who are most in favor of the um, mediation feel that they were somewhat victimized and that there was an offender, that the process was the offense, and that that type of um, so I'm saying I don't know that I don't know that we can because we don't have like a really clear like is the board the offender. Um, but I'm saying I, from. I think it would depend on, you know, either be different offenders. <laughs> very true. Yeah. yeah, very true. Yeah, I think so I'm saying I'm like. <laughs> I think you could put a lot of people would have multiple roles. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, go ahead. Are there different methodologies that are used for each of these yeah. groups? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and there are different methodologies that are on this paper that get to. And so, and we, what, what, when I heard those, and I do, I'm, I've been debating whether to say anything, but I'm going to say it. You know, you got to do it. I think there's a passion for listening. That's what you want to do, is get some listening. Because that's what I've heard you talk about this whole time. For the months you've been talking about this, and it's for people to feel heard. So, the key word I get there is listening, and I'm compassionate. And that, that's what I've heard public come and say, we want to be heard. Um, so as you read those, well, I was like, that's the one to me. I also think you're going to, if you don't know how many people are shopping, you really don't know that day, but you need, in my experience, you are doing something like that, where it said less than 30, to me that would even be large. It's mm -hmm. smaller mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. that there's a facilitator for each group. Mm -hmm. um, but that's my two cents. So if we, uh, that's what you're saying. The, I'm going to go into the mechanics here then. Um, and if we, we're not going to know how many people we have until they show up. I guess we could ask for an RSVP. But um, how do we then um, ensure that we have adequate numbers of facilitators to mm -hmm. meet whatever the turnout might be. And if we are having, let's say we have six facilitators, what are we looking at in terms of the cost um, to do that? So I'm like, I, I, I like, I like People who are skilled in stuff. I think I, the best person I know when it comes to like, restorative practices is, is Jody Anderson. She's a pro. She's national certified. She's going to work on her master's in it right now. And you know, she's very clear that you know, there is that she can flex at times and has different. She has those protocols in her hip pocket. She has them memorized. More people show up. How do I mm -hmm. how do I set the norms differently than if it's ten versus thirty? Mm -hmm. The facilitator can do that. Mm -hmm. So you, that's what we're paying for is to have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is the right time to speak so much. Uh, I have a. I feel that we should really try to bring people to small groups. It's a lot harder to have your mirrored sunglasses on when you are looking at a specific person or two or three other people than it is when you're like, all right, I'm just going to talk to you. You're just going to tell like it is. That's right. I'm going to feel better about this. You know what I mean? It's like that effect where, so I, I think if we want to keep this civil and have it be productive for people, they need to be very small groups. And I would hope that we could structure it or a facilitator could help us so that one person could kind of circulate or, um, I think it's going to be very hard to find a facilitator. I mean, we can't just have like 20 people in waiting just in case it's not feasible. Do you think that's something that a facilitator can do, Bill, since you seem to have some expertise in this area? Can um, well, I mean, you saw Monday night. That was a different type of, very different issue. Mm -hmm. um, it's working with a group that are willing to, to do that and to have those pieces. 
you know, I, I, I still stand by what I said earlier, having an outside person in each group is going to be the best way to go. And, and, and maybe it is, it's, uh, as Brian said, an RSVP, we need to know 10 of the numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair, right? Yeah. yeah. And say, hey, we just want to know. Because we want to make sure. We want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you said it in the positive intentions you just said, Allison, mm -hmm. our intention is to have like a, a listening form, mm -hmm. but in a way that's respectful and warm for everyone to be able to have their voices heard. Mm -hmm. But that and we feel it's appropriate that we have a picture to help us through that conversation. So we even, we even have to come. I actually love the format we have on Monday. It'd be so great if somebody from the group could get up and summarize so that like then the person felt like everybody, you know, it's not a general view. But anyway, now we're meaning to leave. So so what do we need to decide upon tonight to, to move forward with this? So I mean is the compassionate listening, that's the one that's going to help me too. Is that something that you want to sort of propose as a general model to whoever we're talking to? I thought you read that that one was two, multiple two-hour sessions. Is that, did I that miss her? That one can be between 30 minutes and three days, depending okay. on how many people are involved. Okay. The last sentence is that the mediator will facilitate the one that way in on this. Yeah. And then just right. on the so yeah. you tell them your issue, you say, hey, this is what we look at. This is what, what's your experience tell you? Okay. So they'll go. They yeah, no, 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 they right, right, they're right, 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 yeah. They're worth the money that we're paying. Right. Uh, right. So what do we, um, what exactly are we going to do? Are we going to identify a date or no? Okay. Yeah. I think we need to give Woden the ability to identify a date within a range. And make well, a commitment? Well, the real front gets so okay. We will now look at That's why she so made a, a date, a date range. What's the thing you can do in the first couple of days? I'm assuming you're early in the week, maybe, three times? First week of May, I'm actually totally gone, but if you don't want to do this without me. It have to be the no, third, week of, third week of May was what we were. Third week of May. So third week of May. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, third week of May. The, the third week is the 14th through the 18th. Okay. And you're done on the 14th of May, so you finish the 14th. Okay. The 14th will be fine, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so I guess the question is, when I talk to people, do, first of all, we have three different people who are recommended. How do we go about making well, voluntary I think you said you didn't learn about two of them learn about No, that's true. But now I just got an email this after at 4 o'clock today saying she recommends this team. This is Elisa Bettinger did the roles in the Rebels in South Burlington, Annie O'Shaughnessy and Denise Perry, and they're willing to do it for our budget. Um, but there is also Susan Terry, who is here from St. John's Ferry. Um, and you're trying to see working with her? Uh, someone named Denise Perry. So, so we get two. So. I mean, in this case, it's two. I, I think the question is, like, who, do you want me to go ahead with, with Susan Terry? Do you want me to go ahead with this team? I'm happy to do either. You said this team work with the people in Burlington? Uh, this is, no, the okay. women who worked with the people in Burlington recommended okay. these two. Of course, we don't know anything about them. I will say that Susan Terry seemed like a very nice woman. Yes. I was surprised that she did not show her skills more at the meeting, and I was not, that I thought perhaps she should have. There was, there could have been mediation at that meeting, and I thought it was an excellent time to have an interview, and she didn't really do that. She didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I had the same reaction. It, um, it seems less, it didn't seem like she was sort of taking control of the situation in the way that I would have thought of the person. Right, so, kind of contact is should I go with these two? Mm -hmm. that, I mean, do people want to go with Susan Perry? I think, I think, I, I still, um, from, this is just where I'm coming from, I, I can't get, I want to be able to have the opportunity to engage the facilitators, like we did Susan Terry, in a session like this, so we can um, hopefully be on the same page. Because like I said, we were felt like we were moving in all different directions, um, or some different directions, about what we were trying to accomplish with this. And I don't think that's productive if we can't be clear um, or, have, or have maybe the facilitators can coalesce what, you know, what they're hearing from us into a vision, um, that would be helpful. But I, 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 after what I saw the last time, I'm just, I don't want to fly blindly at all. So, so, 
to je taký písem, to je dobře, tak než je zval jiný poslanec za přílišové, takže tím bude to věci, to je to věci. So, in June, when we, when we met and we, we voted on the budget and we agreed to do it, we were cautioned not to rush it, that doing it wrong would be disastrous. And for a lot of, of a wide variety of reasons, very little happened between, I mean, officially at a board meeting between June and Susan Terry coming in February. Now at our March meeting, it's like, let's rush, let's set the date, let's get this, which I understand because we want it to happen. But going back to what Brian said about us coming together, I think the best way to do it is have the facilitator facilitate a meeting be in the role of facilitating a discussion among the board and in in what we want our goals to be and the parameters to be around this mm -hmm. and I think that would be step number one then we would schedule and plan the community even if it meant June even if it meant summer um, I think that would be more valuable to reaching a wider range of the board goals and to having everybody a little more comfortable with what we're doing with the community. So that's that's my thought. I can accept this. I think it would be really nice if we posted something publicly to tell people that we are actively engaged in planning something um, so, so that they know that this is not a forgotten issue. Um, but I realize that agreeing on language may be another point of contention, which I don't want to cause. I just want people to know that they're not being, if this isn't really an issue for me, but I feel like it's definitely an issue for some people, and it'd be nice if they did not feel forgotten. And I thought we wanted to get that out last time as well, after we met with Susan, that we had made a comment about, like wanting to keep people knowing where, where we were at. So I agree with you. Okay. So I, um, I love your idea of having a facilitator facilitate uh, yeah, discussion. Boy, that, that might really, you know, help yeah. us with our board tensions as well. Um, I think we'd have to be willing to pay for that, um, which I'm happy to. I think that that's a financial priority for me. Um, I also don't want to let this go beyond June, um, and I'm happy to meet in the interim, you know, as many times as we need to. Like it feels like we got some things we got to clear off our plate before we can actually do the work of this year, and I think this is one of them. I don't have strong feelings other than Susan witnessed, you, you know what I mean? Like she witnessed the mm -hmm. tension directly, so we wouldn't need Did we do it? <laughs> we wouldn't mean to uh, describe it. That's all recorded on archive. I don't know. I felt like in June she was mentioned. She, um, Chris contacted a few other people. We still came up with her. I get the the perspective of, of she didn't facilitate that, but that wasn't her role. And and part of what the facilitators do is they care a lot about whose role is is it. Mm -hmm. And, and not crossing the line. She was basically, you know, almost interviewing for a job, seeing if she wanted to work with us. So I don't. But she specifically decided not to interview for that job. And I thought that was interesting. And actually, I sort of thought we needed somebody who was a bit more proactive. Although, as you may have gathered from knowing you for a short time, that is kind of. <laughs> I tend to do that perhaps more than I should, so maybe that's not the best thing. But. Um, so if, before you would get into a session like that, all the New Year's, 
they're going to talk to all of you individually before they come in. Mm -hmm. They're not going to step in that role. And be so they can't do that at, the, at this meeting, though, like with the public forum. They can't talk to everybody at this They can't talk to you before. They, they, they would talk to talk. us. Oh. But, right, you're right. About the, but you're I'm saying, like, community forum. right, at the community yeah. forum, they couldn't talk no. to anybody. No. no, 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 but that's a different piece. But right. what you're talking about for you as a board and expecting her to step up and try to resolve conflict at a board meeting, a good mediator is going to say, I don't start that way. Yeah. I start by talking, I'm going to talk to each person individually first and get a lay of the land so that I can survey it and figure out what's the best way to bring people together. Because they're not going to start with a whole group. Every time that I've been in mediation, either representing the school district or another case, it's been, let's start talking to everyone individually first and figure out what the way the land is. Or it's a pretty quick, hey, we're all here together today and we're going to break apart and go in here. And so, and, so, and so, and that mediator goes back and forth and starts to feel like, where's the middle ground that I can build upon to bring people back together? You are right, in the defense, you can't really. <laughs> and it just and the number of times her name came up from between June and February, I I don't want to I don't want to start all over. No, it was a it was a Middlesex community member who came in June who was telling us how we had to do it. He was being very direct. I don't know who it was. He initially said Susan Terry's name. He said she's the best. She's who you want. And then going through a different process, we still ended up with her. So I, I feel comfortable. Yeah, let's see. Let's that, see if she's available for the okay. next board meeting. So let's see. If it, it, uh, so there's a two-part question. Is she available to facilitate us at the next board meeting? And what would that cost? Right? Do we have money for that? Are we willing to commit money for that? Up to what? I think we should. I wouldn't go. We could go with one. Um, I would I would keep it in the fifteen hundred budget, and then if we need to add on to what we already voted for to have the next one, do that. That I would feel better about that than stating a number for facilitating the board. Okay, I'm just wondering when I call her and say, "Can you come facilitate the board?" She's going to tell me a number. And so up to yes or no, or, or up to that. Where does she live? Where does that? Thank you. But she works Danville. She works in Montgomery. Yeah. Yeah. She, she works in New Rhode Island. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I think she works at the farm. Okay. Okay. So she has a 45-minute drive each way, plus the which she commit to some sort of time limit. So this would potentially be probably like a, you know, a two-hour meeting. It would be like a four-hour meeting. So we're looking at what, 500 bucks for me? Okay. Is that something we're looking at? I'm about to say, I think Caroline gave you some great conversations. Yeah, I'm not going to go on this. I think that's what I'm going to go on this. Okay, so as I and us too, because I need to make a commitment to her from not here to come on April twelfth. Yeah, I think I would say Okay. I mean she'd have to come anyway to plan for May and the board piece just helps us better plan it. Mm -hmm. So and then if she's not available April twelfth, do we change our meeting date or do we um, the see if the other people are my recommendation would be see if the other people are available if they are then we give it to them if they're not then we look at a different meeting date and we can do scheduling by email yeah. yep okay um, and then do we need so our I guess the part that I'm still a little confused is it feels like some of us are committed to doing this not I'm not hearing that from you at this point mm -hmm. doing the May community forum the compassionate listening, if that's the title we want to, you know, if that's the category we want to choose. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I would feel much better. Um, I'll take that back. I, 
I would like to have more information to base that level of commitment on okay. after our next meeting. Yeah, I think I would, I think that more accurately represents where I'm at because it really depends on can we agree on why we're there and what the parameters are. And I think that will come from our next meeting. So back to Wilton's question, the budget for the mediation for the board meeting, um, I feel comfortable saying up to 500 and we can negotiate as we feel necessary. Can you make it negotiate? Can everyone feel okay with that? And I don't think it, I don't think we have to vote on that. No, I just want to know what they were, because yeah. especially in our look button stuff, you know, I want to be super clear on that, what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to call Susan Terry, ask if she can facilitate a discussion of the board around our goals for a possible, even probable meeting in the third, early part of the third week in May. And that we are tentatively looking at something in the conflict transformation, we're pretty sure it's in conflict transformation, tentatively sort of along the lines of compassionate listening, but we would really help that I appreciate her help in helping us figure that out. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. And then that will be the only agenda for April 12th. Is that what the suggestion was, Bill? Okay. And everything else happens in May. Okay. okay. And that's going to happen at Romney at 6 o'clock. Right? Okay. Okay. I just I want to put something out there and speaking truths. Um, you know, I think um, this is just an observation that I'm having at this moment. Um, and that is, this is something we've been talking about for a year, over a year now, um, with different feelings about it over the first several months. And then we kind of galvanized last June to, to, to want to do this. And um, it didn't happen. Um, and it took, you know, months to get someone here. And that's just, that, that was okay. And so now we're suddenly feeling urgency. And I guess so, I can't help but, I don't know what it is, but that's just something that, I, that I'm observing, is that it's, you know, all of a sudden now it's become a priority while it's just kept on at other times being kicked down the road. And I don't know if it's because what are you suddenly taking it on? Um, is it in Chris's camp? I, I, I don't know what the, what the reasoning is behind it, but it just, I'm, I want to make that observation. Um. I appreciate that, and I want to just say that for me, this has been incredibly urgent all along. I don't know that we can move forward in a healthy way until we do this. And, um, but it didn't look cool last year. There was not a majority of the board who were excited about doing it. Um, and so, but we uh, voted. Yeah, yeah, we I, all I, voted in June. Yeah, it was 5 0. There was, there was, yeah. There was. Think, okay, well, I was. Certainly, I mean, it, I think sometimes it takes someone to, um, mm. yeah, and I feel like we're perhaps already, um, for me, the feeling is different. I'm sure, you know, it's different for all of us um, this year, but I feel perhaps a little more like things are possible um, in a way that they didn't feel possible last year. Um, what do you mean? Like, I think, had I done this work last year, I don't know that we would have had the same conversation. I think we should talk about this. Meeting. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we write this question yeah. down. Yeah. We should write that down or we can refer to the minutes. Thank you. That would yeah. be a good topic. Yeah, I think with. you're exactly right. Let, let, the, let a person who's still paying help you through those questions. I just think it will it'll help the it be structured. I just want to um, call attention to the fact that our meeting wasn't um, posted on a front porch form. Um, Didn't I put it on there the first? The agenda, the, the agenda is agenda. usually posted. Yeah. Remember we talked about okay. sort of the, the practices. We, um, we post the agenda, have some commentary, um, and just kind of let it let it stand as it is. It's sort of at least what we everyone seemed to in the past be comfortable on green on. Um, so I, 
No, uh, you're right. That was important. I'm sorry. That's right. And you know what I did last year is whenever Krista sent the packet, I would just cut and paste it like that second and put it in some such form. It was just a good prompt. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.